Good afternoon. This is Chemistry 104 at Bryn Mawr College. This is an example problem on using colligative properties. And this is Professor Francel broadcasting on a snow day from her office at home. So the problem that we were working in class on Friday was this one. An example problem using the freezing point depression to find molar mass. Um, the problem is situated in the following context that you can extract nicotine from tobacco leaves. And if you take a 1.92 gram sample of nicotine, dissolve it in some water, and find the freezing point, um, this will give you the molar mass. Um, and that you can then use that molar mass with an elemental analysis to find the molecular formula. So let's sketch out our strategy before we dive into using all the equations we have to hand. So the first piece is that we would like to be able to find the molar mass. And if we realize that molar mass is just the ratio of the mass, the grams of nicotine, divided by the number of moles of nicotine in the same sample, um, we can use the freezing point depression to find the moles. We're given the grams of nicotine in the problem, right? So here's the number of grams of nicotine. So I have that. I can get the moles of nicotine from the molality. If you remember, the molality is moles per kilogram of the solvent. Um, and I can get that from the freezing point depression. And the kilograms of solvent is another thing that I'm already given. Um, so here it gives me the mass of the solvent. So I can take these given pieces and work myself backwards from the freezing point depression to find the number of moles. And from there, I can find the molar mass. So that's piece one. We'll go back and put numbers in, and that will help. Piece two is then what do we do with this and the elemental analysis? Well, we can remember from first semester that if we take our elemental analysis, we can go from there to the empirical formula. And if you use the empirical formula plus the molar mass, you can get the molecular formula. So it's a two-step problem that requires that we remember things from last semester, which will not be atypical for things that you might find as the more challenging problems on the weekly word problems or on an exam. So let's see how this all works out. So our first part of this problem advice find, involves finding that molar mass. So if we use the expression that we have for the freezing point depression, delta Tf, is equal to the freezing point depression constant, which applies to the solvent, so it applies to water, not to nicotine, in this case, times the molality. Um, the freezing point depression we're given, um, and the absolute value of that is 0 0.045 degrees C. The freezing point depression constant we can look up. I gave you a table of a few. There's a table in the book. There's tables online that you can use. And it's 1.86 degrees C per molal. Um, and that just leaves us then with the molality um, to figure out. And that's x, because we're looking for those moles of nicotine, divided by the mass of solvent, which we were given. And I'm going to convert it to kilograms on the fly. It's 48.92 times 10 to the minus third kilograms. The tablet's a little slow at following me while I'm broadcasting. OK. So if I put all these pieces together and solve for x, 0 0.540 is equal to 1.86 times x over 48.92 times 10 to the minus third. Solve, I find that x is equal to 0 
0.1183 moles. And from there, I can find the molar mass trivially. It's grams, so it's 1.921 grams divided by 0 0.01183 moles. And I find that it's 162.3 grams per mole. So we want to hold on to that number because we're going to use that with the empirical formula to grab part two. So part two of this, if we remember from before, I can take my carbon, nitrogen, and or carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. This had no oxygen in it. So carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen should add up to 100% or very close thereto. Um, and I can start this by assuming I have 100 grams of these. So if I take 74 grams of this, 8.7 grams of hydrogen and 17.29 grams of nitrogen. You divide by the atomic mass. I find it easiest just to do this as a little table going across. Divided by 12 because that's the mass of carbon, 12.01. Um, it's carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, 1.008. Um, and this is 14.01. Um, and this gives us then 6.61, 6 6.6, .6, ah, um, this gives us 6.1667, so this gives us 6, 6.1167, this gives us 8.6309, and this last gives us 1.23412. Um, divide by the smallest in each case. So divide this by 1.234. And this by 1.234. And that by 1.234. And this should give us the final ratios. Um, this gives us 5, 7, and 1. So we find our empirical formula is C5. H7N, um, but if I add up the molecular weight for that, um, what I find is the molecular weight for this is 81.1 grams per mole. So if I take the ratio of these two, the molar mass that we calculated for nicotine in the previous part of the problem, 162.3 divided by 81.1, this means that it's twice the empirical formula, two times C5H7N, or to express that correctly, this gives us C10H7, sorry, C10H14N2. Okay, so C14, or C10H14. And two, and if you want to know what nicotine looks like as its molecular structure, it has a phenyl ring, benzene ring, the nitrogen substituted down below, and then attached to this is a five-membered ring that also contains nitrogen. There's a methyl group here, and if you count that up, um, there's two nitrogens. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because that's a methyl group there, um, carbons and 14 hydrogens. The end.